Let's look at some cases of subluxated cataracts and how my management has changed uh, and how it's easier to manage subluxated cataracts. Basically, if you look at subluxated cataracts, you have uh, uh, zonular weakness because of either uh, a progressive zonular weakness or a non-progressive zonular weakness. Progressive can be because of conditions like pseudo-exfoliation, high myopia, retinitis pigmentosa, or chronic uveitis. And non-progressive could be traumatic or atrogenic. Uh, interoperative. So the management depends upon whether it's progressive or non-progressive. If, if it's non-progressive, I would like to fix the back and uh, use a lens in the back. If it's progressive, then I would like to kind of remove the back and do. Uh, so the options are iris cloth retrofixation if you remove the back, uh, suture fixation of the back and IUL, scleral fixation of IUL with uh, sutures. Uh, various techniques, uh, suture fixation of with the uh, Yemeni technique and scleral fixation uh, with the glue diode. So the scleral fixation techniques are basically when you remove the back. But let us look at managing subluxated cataracts and fixing these. So this was an interesting case. The patient came with a mature uh, traumatic dislocated uh, uh, subluxated cataract. He had undergone trap also somewhere else in the northeast and then he came with this condition and then uh, we went ahead to manage it. You can see the vitreous there which is prolapsed. Um, yeah, this is the vitreous which is prolapsed there. So I put in uh, trepan blue, stain the capsule and then I am doing the capsular excess and uh, then continue with the forceps. You can put in uh, visco to kind of push down the uh, vitreous there and then I am doing a vitrectomy now and then removing that prolapsed vitreous. Then I put a CTR and this is the bimanual technique of uh, putting in a CTR where you use a second instrument to the side port to support the CTR and then release it into the capsular bag. And then you can go ahead with your FACO. If you feel that the bag is unstable, you can use uh, capsular hooks. But here uh, I find that I am able to manage and then this is very dense cataract. I finished removing the nucleus and uh, you can see that's a uh, little bit of vitreous which has prolapsed. You always manage and remove the vitreous so that it does not interfere or push the bag along with the CTR. Uh, do the cortical cleanup and you can see that there are vitreous opacities because it's a traumatic cataract. Then I want to make a Hoffman's pocket. This is a Hoffman's pocket. This is again to fix the bag so that uh, the subluxation was almost 180 degrees. And that is a nino proline which is railroaded through a 30 gauge needle. And then, but what happens, you can see when I am removing it, the back of the needle touches the PC there. And I have a PCR. So you should be very careful when you are passing the needle. So when this happens, again what do you do? You can see that I have had a PC up there. So now, but we need to fix the bank or the option is to remove the bank. But I go ahead and do a little bit of vitrectomy. Remove the prolapsed vitreous. And then I continue and do a PCCCC. So that's the PCCCC being performed. So once I do the PCCCC, then uh, I use a CTS and put in the nanoprotein through the CTS. Again, railroad it. Bring out the suture through the Hoffman's pocket. Insert the CTS very carefully so that it goes in the bag and not in the vitreous. And then pull on the rolling and see that the bag is centered and then I just adjust the suture in the Hoffman's pocket. And then after that I am able to put the lens into the capsular bag. 
So this was an interesting case. What happens when you are trying to do this and you have a PCR, you can still manage it if you do a PCCCC. And you can see that the lens is well centered there. And I was able to get away with this uh, case. So that's uh, just washing out the viscoelastic. End of the surgery, you can see that it is well centered. Well, this uh, frontal laser useful. This was a patient with a traumatic subluxated cataract after uh, shuttle, in shuttlecock injury. You can see the OCT on the femto shows so much of tilt of the lens. You can see that there is so much of gap there in the, you can see there is a amount of tilt, but it kind of defines the cataract there. What you have to do is you have to offset it. Uh, the uh, capsule center, you can use uh, custom centration, offset it so that it is centered to the capsular back. And then you may have to reduce the size. So you can see there is an extreme degree of uh, subluxation, almost 270 degrees of subluxation and quite a bit of tilt in this case. But the advantage of the Femto is that you can kind of customize and you get a perfect rexis, you can offset the rexis because the rexis is most important if you want to maintain the bank. So that is the offset rexis and then we do the capsulotomy and the nucleotomy. You can see that it is offset. And then we take the patient to the table. You can see 270 degrees of subluxation. This patient was a young patient, uh, very particular not to wear glasses also after surgery. So we decided to use a heat off lens, the Symphony. So here I'm using a iris hook, but you can ideally use a capsular hook to support the bag at the area of maximum subluxation. And then you remove the cataract make space so that you can put in a CTR, that's the bimanual insertion of the CTR into the capsular bag. So it is held up by the hook and then you put in the ring to kind of distribute the forces and stabilize the bag, remove the last piece and cortical cleanup after you put in the CTR is a little difficult but you can do tangential stripping of the cortex or reverse stripping and then I remove the hook and now I have to make a Hoffman's pocket and fix it because 270 degrees the bag is not centered that's making the Hoffman pocket and then I pass in a nino proline suture through the Hoffman's pocket railroad it into a 30 gauge needle bring it out you can see the edge of the CTR there because the subluxation is quite a bit. That's the CTS. So you put the suture through the CTS. And then the CTS is introduced into the capsular bag. Position at the area of maximum subluxation so that the eyelet is just across the Hoffman's pocket and then you pull on the suture until the bag is centered and then you can suture in the Hoffman's pocket and then it is stable. So making a Hoffman's pocket is a little bit of a nuisance especially if it's in an odd area and then sometimes you may have to use your left hand like in this case I use my left hand that's a symphony being introduced then I put in a little bit of cramps alone to see if there's any uh, vitreous, there is no vitreous and you can see that the lens is very well centered and this patient did very well, he had uh, 6, 6 and 8 vision post-op. That is the, you know, the procedure and the post-op photographs, you can see that the lens is centered. You can. This is another interesting case of a very, almost a blackish cataract, traumatic cataract with subluxation. And these are cases which are difficult to manage when you have a very hard cataract. So that's when newer technology comes uh, handy. Here I'm showing you the use of the MyLoop device, which is a new device which has just been introduced from Zeiss, where you can use it to actually cut the cataract. This is the MyLoop de device. It's a 
made of nitinol with an accentuator and it's just 300 microns, very soft, it does not damage the capsule and the forces with this device are centripetal from external to internal so that there is no stress on the back. So you just open it under the anterior capsule, open it completely. It's got high memory also, so it takes the shape of the lens, cross section of the lens. Then you rotate it gently so that you can see that the posterior aspect, the silvery reflex of the posterior aspect of the loop is seen. And then you just cross the midline. You use a second instrument to support the nucleus as you close the accentuator and then it cuts the nucleus into two. So for very even, it can cut even the hardest, the blackest of cataracts very easily and it reduces your FACO energy by almost 50 to 60 percent and you can see that Devon corneas are clearer. And here again, uh, because with the FACO probe, if you are chopping or splitting, then the forces are centrifugal and you can further disrupt John Lewis. Here, because the forces are centripetal, it is a little gentler. So you rotate by 90 degrees and again use the my loop, introduce the my loop. And you can see that silvery reflex again. You need a good hydro dissection before you can use the my loop. I think Dr. Sheetal will be speaking more on the my loop, so I will just show you the video here for subluxated. So you can see the color of the cataract, it is very dense. So that is the second cut. So now I have four fragments. It's very leathery. So sometimes you may just have to separate it a little even after closing the loop so that the loop gets released and then you can go in with your FACO and then remove the fragments without any stress on the back because the fragments are loose. And then after that you have to put in a CTR. Of course the subluxation was not um, so much that we had to fix the back. So we just put in a it's a cortical cleanup. That's the introduction of the CTR, the bimanual technique where you use uh, Sinsky and uh, Collister Tyler. Then <coughs> introduction of the lens. You can see that the lens gets well centered. I still have time. The video is 21 minutes. And that's the end of the procedure you can see that the lens is very well centered and the cornea also is quite clear. First day post-op black cataract you can see that the lens is centered well and the cornea is clear. So you can use the my loop. This is uh, the technique which I use now for subluxated cataracts where you don't have to use a Hoffman's pocket. This is again a cataract which is uh, subluxated more than 180 degrees. Traumatic cataract. I mean the capsulorexis. Uh, again, capsulorexis is uh, done better with the rexis forceps because the forces are not evenly distributed on the anterior capsule and you can have uh, difficulty in doing the rexis with the cystito. That's the hydro dissection. And I have made a, made a side port for uh, putting in the hook. First, I put in the CTR, that is the insertion of the CTR, the bimanual technique. And once I put in the CTR, uh, see that it's in place, then I, I use a capsular hook. That's the capsular hook to support the and lift up the capsular back. And then I go ahead and do the FACO, FACO chop. So I thread 6 o proline into uh, 30 gauge, you can use a 27 or 30 gauge needle, pass it about 1.5 mm 
behind the limbers, bring it out through the in front of the capsular bag under the iris and then pass it through the eyelet of the CTS and then I use uh, a bowie thermal pottery, a slow pottery to flange. So that is the flange being created. So this is a very simple technique. There is no need to reflect the conjunctiva, no need to make a Hockman's pocket. So once the, you flange it, you see that the flange does not come out through the eyelet and it is larger than the eyelet. So once it is stable, then you can put in the CTS. See that the eyelet comes over the anterior capsule and center the back, then the flange the other end. You can hold it so that it's tight, flange the other end and you can see that the bag is very well centered. Then you put in the intraocular lens, that's a Technus 1 lens which is using here. So into the capsular bag. That's insertion of the trialing haptic into the capsular bag. And now you can see that it is very well centered. It is quite stable. It's very fast fixation. It's very easy to do this technique. You can see that you can look at the reflex from the edge of the lens uh, and you can see that it's very well centered. I just wash out the viscoelastic. It's perfectly centered. Put in a little bit of pilocarpine to constitute it. There was some amount of traumatic midriasis also. Close the head in the incision. And you just have to bury the flange subconjunctively. So the flanging technique was described by Kana Brava. This is the first post op day picture. You can see it's very well centered, dilated pupil. So it was described by Kana Brava, but we modified it by pre threading it into the. This was another case, the last case of uh, traumatic subluxated cataract. Again, uh, we use the femto here. So with the femto, you can actually center the capsulotomy. Custom center it so it's decentered with regards to the pupil, but it's centered to the back, and that's the incisions being made. You can see the inferior is the area of maximum subluxation. I do a hydro, and then I'm using a capsular hook here to support the bag at the area of maximum subluxation. Hydro dissection, you can see the postural fluid wave decompress the nucleus. This nucleus also was quite dense, you can see it's like a grade 3 plus cataract. So you have to split the nucleus and then remove the quadrants. Once the quadrants are removed, uh, you do your cortical clean up before putting in the CTR ideally because if the cortex is there you put in your CTR then it's a little more difficult to remove the cortex. So you can see I'm stripping away as much of the cortex as possible. manual IA also. I am used to the coaxial. And then this is the introduction of the CTR in the bimanual technique to ensure that it goes into the capsular bag and you release the CTR into the capsular bag. And here again then I remove the capsular hook. You can see that it is decentered the capsular rexis so I need to Basically, I am putting visco under the iris to make that space. Then I pre thread 6 o proline. This is a 27 gauge needle going 1.5 millimeters 
we had to bring it out under the iris in front of the anterior capsule through the main incision, pass it through the eyelet of the CTS, then I use the Bowie cautery to flange it again. See that it does not come out. Then put the CT CTS into the capsular bag. And then you just bring out, you pull on the suture. Here actually I am putting the IOL before flanging the <coughs> external suture because I can adjust the centration. You see I put in the IOL, does the trialing haptic into the capsular bag. Once that is done, then I pull on the suture. So I know how much of the bag I have to center, then hold it tightly with, with the micro forceps, cut about 2.5 to 3 millimeters, then flange it. You can adjust it also, you can increase the flange if required, but it under. So you can see that it is well centered. So this is an easy technique of uh, fixing the capsular bag. That's the end of the procedure. You can see that the lens is well centered and uh, you show the first day post-op photographs dilated. You can see that the lens is very well centered, undilated photograph. So these were a few cases I wanted to share and you can make your subluxated cataract surgery much easier by using this technique. Thank you very much for attention. So much, Dr. Shri Ganesh. Indeed, a very enlightening talk, inspiring people like me. And the most fun.